guys, welcome to Psalm 74. Um, I loved this psalm. Here I'm showing you the, what the printables are like for this week. Um, what the first one was what we're meant to be when God makes his home in us on earth. And the second page there that you're looking at is, is what happens when the enemy of our soul um, corrupts that temple. So like, wow, what powerful imagery. So um, I do want to mention before I read the psalm that I forgot to put gesso down on these pages. Um, so you'll see me oftentimes going to the and just checking to see if it's bleeding through. Um, and then what you do, so let's say that you don't have clear gesso, that's okay. What I want you to do, and you'll see me doing it, is drying the back of the page. So put down your watercolors and work on the front of your page, but then turn that page over and just dry the back of the page. That just gets everything settled um, within those paper fibers. And ultimately, you will still have a page that is not wrinkling up and creating a mess. So um, you'll see me doing that. I just wanted to preface kind of before we start reading. But without further ado, let me go into the psalm and, uh, <clears throat> and read it. I'm going to stop reading it kind of where it, it, it just blew me away and, and just share your thoughts. Um, so it's Psalm 74. And again, I'm reading from the Passion Translation. We need you now, a poem of instruction. Are you really going to leave us, God? Would you turn your back on us, rejecting your people? We are yours, your very own. Will your anger smolder against us forever? Don't forget that we are your beloved ones. Wrap us back into your heart again, for you chose us. You brought us out of slavery and bondage and made us your favored ones, your Zion people, your home on earth. Oh. Turn your steps towards this devastation. Come running to bring your restoring grace to these runes, to what the enemy has done to devastate your holy place. They have come into the very midst of your dwelling place, roaring like bees, setting up their banners to flaunt their conquest. Now everything is in shambles. They've totally destroyed it. Like a forest chopped down to the ground, there's nothing left. All of the beauty of the craftsmanship of the inner place has been ruined, smashed, broken, and shattered. I, that just, this was one of those Psalms that just stopped me in my tracks. And what a powerful image of what the enemy of our soul is trying to do to us. We are that perfect little girl there, that, that beloved child of God, look, reaching up to, to daddy and just loving on him and needing him. And that enemy of the soul, that is what he wants to do to us. Though that, those shards and that, that devastation on the page next to her, that's this, this page spread right here completely captures um, the the conflict of, of walking on earth. Here I just wanted to show you that when I'm doing the hair, the edge of my brush is splayed out a little bit. So it's not coming to a fine point with water. It's a more of a dry brush and those fibers are spread out a little bit. So that creates different pieces of hair without even having to work at it. Cheating! So, um, so I love that he says, the, the um, Asaf sets this off with that we are, he has made his home in us on earth so that we are the temple. We are that which is walking on the earth, housing the Holy Spirit, right? So then it says, he goes on to say that there is this one thing that is coming against us. It, he keeps talking about they, 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 they have come into the midst. They are roaring like beasts. They, they, they. So who is this, this they? <clears throat> well, it's the enemy. Um, Come running to bring your restoring grace to these rooms, to what to ruins, to what the enemy has done to de devastate your holy place. Listen, we are all under a constant attack by the enemy. So in Genesis, um, sorry, I, I wanted to go find, um, I lost it, but it's Genesis 4, 7, reading from my amplified version. If you do well, you will not, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin crouches at your door. And we know that, right? But listen to the extra wrinkle that Amplified gives you. Its desire is for you, 
but you must master it. So think about that. That sin crouches at our door. The enemy of our soul that wants to topple the temple of us with with disquieting thoughts, with with um, distraction, with busy schedules, with different kinds of worldly fleshly sins. This enemy crouches at our door and it desires us. It's not passively waiting for us to open that door and allow it in. It is literally on guard, sitting at our door, desiring us, longing to connect with us. That is powerful. That is the enemy of our soul. That is what we are fighting against. That is why we have to keep our thoughts pure and lovely, and we have to dwell on the goodness of the Lord. That is why we need constant relationship with him. That is why every single day we have to get into the word and into our relationship and we have to commit ourselves to it. You know, because sin crouches at our door and desires us. Listen, at some point we're going to we're going to mess up. So what is going to be what is going to be the biggest desire? That sin's desire for us or our desire for the Lord, our desire to walk with him. Because if our desire is greater than that of the sin crouching at our door, we, we win. We win over that sin because our Jesus every knee will bow. So how do you do that, right? Because I don't want to ever just speak Christianese and I don't want to um, you know, Know, just make it seem like this this great lofty conversation we do that by spending time with him with your kids with your husband with your parents with those that matter to you the only way that you have valid meaningful relationship is by spending time with them we have to spend time with the king of kings we have to spend time with our father god we have to we have to because because this right here this spread is either side that we're going to be living living in victory on. We're going to be living in victory where we are the, um, we're walking out the holiness of God and the righteousness of God on the earth, or we'll, we're trying to always pick up our pieces. Like, look at that temple. It's just devastated. We're trying to pick up our pieces and we're trying to rebuild it on our own power, not through the grace of God, not through the, the salvation of God. We keep on toppling. Listen, if you are in a, in a situation right now where you feel like your temple continues to topple and all you're doing is like shoveling sand against the tide, trying to rebuild, trying to rebuild, and it keeps tumbling, stop, stop. You cannot do that on your own. You cannot rebuild the temple on your own. You cannot. Stop. Ask God in. Give Jesus the space and the place in your heart to take up residence and allow him to let you be his place on earth. What? That we even get to do that. Oh my gosh, just, just, just what? So, so if, if you're the temple that you just keep on trying to restore, I want to read these words to you, what God says, what the promises in scripture say, come running to bring your restoring grace to these runes, to what the enemy has done to devastate your holy place. The enemy has come into the very midst of me, your dwelling place, roaring like a beast, setting up boundaries, bound, bound, banners to flaunt their conquest. Everything is in shambles. The enemy has totally destroyed me. Like a forest chopped down to the ground, there's nothing left. All of the beauty of the craftsmanship of the inner place has been ruined, smashed broken and shattered. Listen, that is not our destiny. That is not our inheritance. That is not, that is a lie of the enemy and that is not who we were created to be. One, you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And I know that sounds so trite and I know you've probably heard that before and I know that it would probably fall on deaf ears. But I want, I pray that the Holy Spirit Spirit pierces your heart today with these words. That when we allow Jesus in, we become the dwelling place of God on this earth. 
this right here, the temple versus the girl with love shining out on her face. This is our choice. It's just that simple. This is our choice. Do we want to keep on rebuilding the temple or do we want to relax into the presence of him? Do we want to allow him the space and the grace to allow us to become his dwelling place on earth? Do we want to shine that love of our Savior into the world? Do we want to walk easier with a peace and a joy that surpasses all understanding? Yeah, I sign me up, man. I am in. So I do this all the time, and I know I do. But listen, we have people saved on this channel every single week. And what does it mean to be saved? It means this, that you're choosing the heart. You're not choosing that temple. You're not choosing the heart that was once on fire and now the temple is in ruins around it. You're choosing a living God in a living relationship in a living body. It's your choice. So maybe you've never done that. Maybe you've never said the words, the Lord Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Let's just say them now. Jesus, I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I ask this body of mine to be your dwelling place on this earth. I give you every part of me to make new. Every part of me, Lord, where the temple is destroyed, where there's brokenness and there's shame and guilt, Lord, I give it to you and I ask you to make it new. I ask you to re Make me in your image, in your holiness, in your grace. And I ask you, Lord, that as you envelop my heart, Holy Spirit, as you come into me, I ask for me to be made new. And everything of the past that I've done, the, the mistakes I've made, made in, the sins I've, I've committed, Lord, I ask that they be forgiven. Jesus, I choose grace and I choose love and I choose mercy. And I choose to walk with you the rest of my days on earth. Listen, it's that easy. You ask him in, you say you're sorry, and you allow him to determine what your days are going to look like. What is that? Like, that's, that's hard for us women sometimes to let go of control and to say, Jesus, I'm going to give you all my plans, all my schemes, all my dreams, and I'm going to say that you walk it out the way you want to. That's a hard thing for women to let go of that control. But can I tell you about the peace and the grace that comes with that decision? So right now, my daughter is getting ready. She's applying to lots of different colleges. Um, my youngest son is applying to a, to a high school. Um, <clears throat> I know this. I know that I've given my, got my, my, I took this off of the printables, by the way, that I'm just cutting it up from the printables, uh, from the doodle sheet and taping it in there. So, um, but so like, let's go, just go to my daughter. My daughter has all of these college applications out and I have asked God to close the doors that are not meant to be open and to allow the opportunities that I know he wants for her. He has a plan for her. He made her for a purpose, which I don't know. But in that place of trust, I can say to him, Lord, I do trust you. Close the doors that are not meant for her. Fling open wide the doors where you want her to be and where she will meet the highest good that you intended her to be. So in that place, I have a peace because I don't have to stress and I don't have to worry because I know that my God's got it. That if I pray and we seek his will, he's going to do it. He's going to close the doors. So can I tell you, we got a college rejection this past week in the mail. I celebrated that rejection because when we were touring that campus and that city, both my daughter, my mom, and I all had a spiritual, spiritual check that this was not meant to be, that we did not like it. We were not enamored with the city we were not enamored with the school so we tried three times to go back in and do a tour with them and to show her portfolio three times a snowstorm came and would not allow us but because I'm daft 
sometimes I need God to hit me upside the head. Um, Because if they had offered a scholarship, I hate to say it, I would have been like, oh, Lord, um, forget about all those other signs. This is this is the one I'm going to listen to. He closed the door according to our plans, according to our wishes, he closed the door. And there's such peace in that place. There's such peace in allowing him to be Lord of my life and in charge of everything I do. So um, if you prayed that prayer, if you want to know more about Jesus being your Lord and Savior, um, give me, drop me a line. You can find me on praiseheart.net. You can find me everywhere. Let me know, guys. So that's all I got for this week. Have a great week, and I'll see you next week on Psalm 75.